Hey folks, so in this video we're going to be talking about gears and specifically we're going to be talking about simple gear trains and how do we go ahead and run those calculations and then how can we go ahead and kind of test them out. Now in a real workshop, in a real classroom, you know, we would probably be playing around with VEX component parts and being able to go ahead and build and physically test them out. Unfortunately, virtually we know that that's not the greatest option. So what we're going to look at is how can we do the math and an online simulator that we can use to go ahead and reinforce that and actually replace the playing around hands-on with a tool that should give you kind of the same concepts. Okay. So for us to kind of maintain kind of the premise of if we were doing this in real life, okay, we'd be using VEX robotics parts and um, I was able to go ahead and find this image that goes ahead and gives us the actual number of teeth and kind of the pitch diameter. Okay, what's the size of those gears? And gear generator is the tool later on that we'll use to go ahead and kind of back up our calculations to actually test out our theories. But before we get there, okay, we're going to have to take a look at the calculations okay and what I want to recommend that you do is um, you know we'll have the activity 1.1.3 uh, but we're going to work off of kind of a paper copy using these gear measurements to help us out okay so to get us started okay we're going to have to pull out some of those measurements now we're going to say that a which will be our input our driver Okay. going through D. And because we know that there are four sizes to work with, we're going to go ahead and just use every single one of them. Okay. So we'll get started with kind of the largest gear, where we know that it has 84 teeth. Okay. Just using kind of a lowercase t to go ahead and indicate teeth. We know that there are 60 teeth okay, in the second of the gears. In the third size, 36 teeth, and then in the last one, 12 teeth. Okay. Now, something that you may have caught on is these are all multiples of 12, and that's going to help us when we get down here to the gear ratios. Okay. Now, paying attention to either your formula sheet and knowing that it's the number of teeth on the out divided by the teeth of your input of your driver, we're basically going to start filling in the data. So if we know that we're going to have 60 teeth from gear B and then 84 teeth from the other, the unit, in this case the number of teeth cancels out, and we can then simplify. Okay? And Again, to simplify, we know that these are divided by 12, so we can say that this is 5 sevenths. Okay. For the CB gear ratio, we're basically repeating the same process. 36 teeth divided by 60 teeth, simplifying down, that's giving us 3 fifths. For C and D, okay, we can tell that D has 12 teeth divided by 36. Simplifying that down, we are given a 1 to 3 ratio. Okay. The next part of this okay, is we can calculate the gear ratio, okay, the decimal equivalent. And this is where we can go ahead and pull out our calculator and say 5 sevenths. Okay. We need the actual decimal value. Okay. And this is basically a 1 to 0 0.714 ratio. Okay. We can do the same thing for each one of these. Okay. 
three fifths okay, is that one to zero point six ratio. And then we can do the same thing. One divided by three, that gives us a one to point three repeating value. Okay. So what's left is multiplying our fractions together and finding our final gear ratio. Okay. So if we multiply these together, and the cool thing to kind of remember about fractions is if we take 5 sevenths times 3 fifths times 1 third, we can get some cross, uh, um, cross multiplications that cancel these out. 5 cancels out 5, 3 cancels out 3, we're left with a final ratio of 1 seventh or we can put it as a 1 to 7 ratio okay. and that's basically saying that for every one rotation of our driver gear okay, knowing that we're getting slightly smaller throughout the cycle okay, our driver makes one RPM our smallest gear will make seven RPM. Okay. You don't need to do that sketching, but that's basically what the final gear ratio is meaning. Okay. So that's the basic calculation. Now you will be doing some other bits about, you know, what happens when you apply 10 pounds of force to gear A, what's that going to do to your force in an ideal situation. But we can check our numbers and see if we actually have that difference of that one rotation per minute versus the seven rotations per minute. Okay. So here's where we go ahead and pop into the gear simulator. Okay. So this is the default site um, for gear simulator. They provide us with four gears, but we'll have a separate video to go ahead and kind of reinforce how do we go ahead and set them up. Okay. So we'll set up the first one, and this is where we're going to have to kind of pay attention and say we know the first one had 84 teeth. Okay. And it's kind of using its own dimensions. We'll talk more about how to go ahead and simplify this down. Um, in terms of scaling this to fit, okay. and let's make this a rotation of one per minute. So that slows it down. And you'll notice that there's a little white dot there. Okay. We'll pay attention to that later. But we need to add in our other gears. So we cleared out all the gears. We're adding a new one. Okay. Now, just to make it a little easier and following more of the drawing, setting the connection angle to zero, we're going to tell it this one has, in this case, 60 teeth. A, another one, okay, and it's kind of picking up the pattern. This one had 36 teeth. And then a final one, adding in 12 teeth. Okay. Now, we have to pay attention to where the dot of the first one is, okay, and kind of keep a steady eye on that as we pay attention to where is the dot on the, um, the far one to the right, okay, RD. Okay? So in this case, we're noticing we're hitting the top, that was hitting the bottom, so that is now made one rotation, two rotations, three rotations and just to simplify that's three and a half and that was the bottom of that okay so if we double that okay we know that that would be seven for the one rotation and this is pretty much matching up with our calculations okay so useful tool provides some other forms of information and it's actually kind of verifying that um, in the uh, the way that it's running through the numbers and seeing its relationship to the original gear 
but um, this should back up your calculations and help you move forward as well as um, kind of giving you an idea of what you're doing. So I hope this helps. And as always, you know, if you have questions, please let me know, comments, questions, emails. Um, and um, hopefully this gives you some uh, an advantage to calculating your gear ratios.